Hey guys, for those of you who've been following my channel for any length of time, you know I like to make custom electronic hardware. Some of it has a unique purpose, like my data logger boards, and other times I make stuff just for the fun of it, like the time I made a smart coaster, because, you know, why not? And then there are other times I like to make stuff just for the challenge of it. And that's what this video is about today, a challenge. What is that challenge? Well, I wanted to see how small could you make an ESP32. Now there are some design considerations I had to factor in, which I'll get into in a little bit, but let's go back a few weeks when I decided to take on this challenge live on a live stream. And needless to say, I thought it went pretty well, so I ordered the PCBs and assembled the first one on stream. And that's when I learned I had made a mistake in my design. Good morning, Mike. Am I winning? Uh, that depends. <laughs> It kind of got it to work, but it has some issues. And now I've got solder paste on the chip itself, which is fantastic. Um, so right now the computer recognizes it, but um, it doesn't want to program for some reason. This is where I decided to throw caution to the wind and go even smaller for the second revision. Now, speaking of those design considerations I mentioned earlier, I set out to make a tiny ESP32, but when you go this small, you have to forgo a lot of the bells and whistles of a normal ESP32. Like, I've only got one GPIO pin broken out, there's no battery charging on this thing, and the biggest bell that I had to throw out was any sort of Wi-Fi antenna. To add an antenna, the design would be much bigger, and I just wanted to see how small I could possibly make this thing. It's essentially a microscopic microcontroller at this point. So, with the second revision designed and the PCBs in hand, it was time to assemble it. Cue the build montage. And it works! Sort of. I put an RGB LED on this thing to make it fancy, but in my haste of making this thing smaller for Rev2, I put the RGB LED on the back of the board, and when I did that, KiCad mirrored the footprint, which meant the pads were not in the correct orientation. So, 
In any case, the core functionality of this thing works, which is awesome. I'm really happy with that. It's an itty bitty ESP32 that if I ever have a project where space is an absolute consideration, I have that option now, which is pretty cool. The only way I could see making it even smaller is if I was to use 0201 components. I used 0401 components for this project, and I could probably find some smaller buttons. So if that's something you'd want to see, leave a comment below. I may do that. And make sure you subscribe. That way you don't miss any of my future nonsense that I put out. In any case, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Later.